Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Today we're going to be looking at repairing and restoring this vintage GI Joe ATV Ferret. Now this is a pretty cool vehicle that I was uh, recently sent by Philippe and uh, as you can see here it actually displays relatively well but uh, if I pick it up you'll see all of the sort of issues that there are with it and that's what we're going to try and fix today. If I pick this up you'll see straight away that the top and the bottom pieces are not connected and that's actually sort of one of the first sort of major flaws in uh, this toy at the moment which do need to be sorted out. You can see at the back there should be a clip uh, and that clips inside the sort of the back uh, sort of upper body section that has snapped off so we need to repair that. Also where this is clipped on in the middle which is held on by this engine piece here you can see that half of that clip is missing and if I pull this engine out as well you can see that the top part of that clip is missing so none of this sort of bottom section of the toy actually holds together. All of those areas need fixing. If we look at the top part of uh, the ATV you can see that one of the missiles on one side there should be another pole sticking out that this uh, missile clips onto. If I show you the other side you can see exactly what it should look like. Uh, that has snapped off and that is missing so we've got to sort of remake that and then we're also missing the hose at the back so there's a whole load of issues that mean that this toy as it stands just falls apart. Now this is the first time I've actually worked on one of these ATVs so all of these fixes I'm going to try today are just stuff that I've tried on other toys and I think the sort of the basic principles will work. Some of them you know may need a few little modifications and changes just because of the types of plastic that are used. This uh, bottom section here you can see is made out of quite flexible plastic obviously because it's supposed to have a bit of spring to it to make the toy feel like it's got some suspension uh, and that generally means when you try and glue things onto it they don't want to glue particularly well so we may end up having to put a few screws through this as well so a glue and a screw to make a new clip on that piece. Likewise this engine block again Again, is made out of quite flexible material but luckily with this we can split it open and get to the inside of these two parts and I think that will mean that we can sort of make some quite good fixings on the inside because again the clips need to be a little bit on the flexible side um, so yeah I think yeah, on the whole those should be fixable they're just a bit awkward and because of the types of plastic we may have a few issues but it's um, certainly something that's worth trying. This top section though is made out of a nice solid plastic and this is the sort of plastic that works very well with plastic welds. I'm going to be able to construct something new to sit on there and glue it in place uh, you know or sort of fuse it in place with plastic weld uh, just out of uh, some sheets of uh, polystyrene and maybe a few bits of lego or a bit of meccano or something like that because I think I've got a round piece that is possibly the same size as that. So I think that's probably going to be the easiest part to fix. The other ones are going to be fairly awkward. The missing hose here that should be pretty straightforward. I have a little bits of hose and other sort of bits of black rubber uh, that I think something I've got in my toolbox will just fit on there so I'm not too worried about that. So let's get started. I think we're going to start on the easiest of the jobs as far as I can see them which is uh, replacing this missing post here just because this is nice easy plastic to work with. I don't think we should have any troubles uh, making something that's, that will fit onto there. So for this missing sort of missile mounting point uh, it's actually going to be fairly straightforward because we can just copy what is uh, there already and you can see that this is the missile. It has uh, some little holes in it and those clip quite nicely onto the end part of that. So we've just got to recreate that out of some plastic. Now for that as I say I'm going to be using uh, polystyrene sheets and also I found a piece of Meccano that will do the job because it's the same sort of diameter as, as the uh, missing little pole that sticks out. I've used these before for another project. I bought them uh, I think to fix a big Jim's uh, foot and uh, they just happen to be made out of a nice sort of easy to work with plastic and they are the right diameter. If I hold that up you can see that's almost a perfect sort of match. It's maybe slightly smaller but it's close enough. I'll put the number of this uh, piece at the bottom of the screen because like Lego all Meccano pieces have a number. So I've picked up a few of these. I've actually sort of used one for another product so I'm going to be using this orange one. The colour doesn't matter it's just a, a case of getting the right sort of diameter plastic. So I'm going to cut a piece off that's the same length as that and I will glue that in place uh, using plastic weld because this sort of plastic and uh, this sort of plastic will bond very nicely with plastic weld. And then for the extra pieces like the little uh, flat portion at the end and this little sort of bar that goes underneath I'm going to be using uh, polystyrene sheets or styrene sheets. Now I've got uh, these in various sizes and sort of thicknesses. This is a one millimeter sheet and this is some offcuts of a two millimeter sheet. I think the end piece 
needs to be just about two millimeters maybe slightly thinner than that we can uh, test that by just seeing if it actually pushes in into this sort of little hole here yeah that should be about the right thickness for that and then the uh, sort of bottom what blade piece or whatever you want to call it that's coming along the bottom we're going to use some of this one millimeter styrene sheet just to uh, fashion something that looks the part so really all i'm going to do is get cutting and get constructing uh, there's no sort of right or wrong way to do this uh, but i just sort of do it by eye you can see it's snapped off fairly neatly i'm going to have to file that bit down just to make it flatter so that we can work with uh, some nice flat surfaces but yeah a bit of cutting a bit of filing and a bit of plastic weld and we'll get something that's the right shape and then once it's the right shape we can paint it I think that's about as good as I'm going to get as you can see I've managed to get the shape pretty much spot on just using that uh, little bit of Meccano and some uh, 
polystyrene sheet as you saw and now I've painted it as close to the blue as I can sort of get a match. I've used a couple of Vallejo model colours. Uh, this is 70.925 which is the sort of darkest blue I have and I've added to that some black which is 70.950 and I think the colour match is not bad, it's not perfect but it's certainly uh, good enough for what's needed. By the time the missile is put onto that I don't think you'll even notice that that has been replaced. Once this paint has dried it needs a little bit more time just to dry that you can see it's still a little bit shiny. I will put uh, some of this on which is a satin varnish again this is uh, 70.522 another acrylic uh, Vallejo paint and I'll class that as done but I think the overall effect is pretty reasonable so um, yeah I'm happy with that. Now everything has had time to dry you can see that is the end result. The colour match is not perfect but really by the time we put this missile on I don't think you will even notice that it's been fixed and you can see that now holds on really quite nicely and uh, yeah looks the job. As you can see I've also put a little bit of uh, rubber hosing in here. I was going to go down the route of using some Lego because I've got this sort of Lego uh, tube that I thought worked quite nicely. It doesn't fit quite perfectly but it could easily be modified with these little sort of end pieces. But uh, again, searching in my sort of tools and spares box, I found I got this hose stuff that I bought uh, ages ago. I think I bought it on eBay. Uh, you can buy all sorts of uh, PVC tubing and rubber hosing and all of this stuff. So I bought this. It's not the perfect size, but with a bit of squeezing and sort of pushing, I've managed to get a piece on there. Uh, really, you need a bit of hose that's uh, slightly thicker than this one. But, uh, you know, considering it's such a small piece of hose, I think that will do the job. And I'm not going to spend any money getting more hose when that, that works. Now we can move on to... Uh, the rest of this vehicle. Now for this under section we've basically got to make the same thing three times because it's three clips that are missing. This is the sort of clip that we need to make on the, the top section. This is the bit that holds the engine into the top section. So you can see on that one it's snapped off shouldn't be too hard to actually make the shape it's attaching it to the bottom that's going to be the problem but again we've got to make the same sort of clip for the bottom because it has snapped off there so those are essentially the same fix twice over and I think this one is going to be much the same apart from the way we attach it as I mentioned earlier I think we might have to screw it on but really the first thing to do is actually make all of the clips for that I'm just going to be using this is two millimeter thick styrene sheet which looks to be about the right thickness we need to angle the top of it so it matches what's there and we need to add this little lip and to do that what I've got is some one millimeter styrene sheet so what I'll do is I'll stick a piece onto that and then I will cut that down so we end up with a nice two millimeter bit with a little sort of lip at the top shaped to be the right sort of shape so I'll get all of these pieces made and then we'll have to start cutting out bits of uh, these original pieces so that we can insert them in and get them stuck in place but first thing to do is to make all of the clips. <music> After only a short amount of time you can see I've now made these little pieces which have a little uh, clip end to them. So that is a two millimetre bit of styrene with a one millimetre sort of bit stuck on the end with, then shaped with a knife and some files. And these are what is going to sort of replace uh, the missing one. So you can see that's the, what an original one looks like and that is what my replacement one looks like. And it's going to work 
pretty well, I think. So what I've done is I've made all three of these now. So that's uh, these are the two to go on the engine block part. And then this is the uh, sort of thinner one. This is actually only on a one millimeter bit of styrene to go on the main wheelbase. We'll do with the engine block ones first. So this one I've started to shape a bit because it needs to fit in quite an awkward space on the engine block. I've actually cut out just using a knife and some plastic nippers, a little square hole there. That's where uh, the original tab had broken off. But by cutting out the uh, it's a hole, I can now insert my sort of new clip and you can see that is what it's going to look like. It's uh, quite uh, respectable in shape. Now I've left the tail of this clip really long because it, this takes quite a lot of pressure uh, it's when it's sort of pushed at the top. So I want to glue it the entire length on the inside, which is why I've made that uh, so long. I've had to cut out a tiny little sort of groove on one side just to make it fit because there's a, a little bit that it sort of touches on there. I think that will work. And I'm going to be gluing this just with some super glue or Gorilla Glue, which I have here. I'm going to put quite a lot on it and I'm going to let it dry fully. Uh, but as you see, I want it to glue the entire length. I've also scratched the surface here just with a knife so that there's a bit of a roughness to the surface. Otherwise, the surface is quite smooth and there's nothing for the glue to grip on. So uh, I will also rough up this surface. This one's not too bad because I've already uh, sort of filed it and sanded it. So that's going to have a roughness to it. And then that gives the uh, glue something to stick onto. But, uh, yeah, let's glue this one in place and we'll see what happens. If that one works, I'm going to do exactly the same on the larger clip. You can see that's already snapped off there. So I just need to tidy up that hole so that uh, this piece will fit in. Again, it's going to have to be sort of modified so that it goes around this, the edges of uh, what's there because there's all sorts of posts and things, but it shouldn't be too bad to get that to fit in. Let's get this one glued first. the same modifications to that other little clip piece that I've made. This one I've had to cut into a sort of more awkward shape just because there's some posts going around and I've trimmed out the edge where it had broken so we've now got a nice sort of square hole there and this piece now fits nice and neatly in there and you can see that's going to uh, form quite a good replacement clip. Again I've left the tail of it long because I want to get as much glue on this inside piece as I possibly can to give it a really strong bond. I've again scratched the surface you can see that I put a few little grooves in there just so that the glue fits and likewise on this uh, new clip and I'm going to glue that one in as well and uh, yeah, we'll let everything dry then for a good little while. And I think uh, that should be good enough. So you can see that lines up quite nicely. If we turn it over, 
that is how the clip looks on the outside. We do need to just double check that it's sticking out as far as the original clip, which I think that does. It might be, I can just sort of push these two pieces together and let them dry together, which would be quite nice. Oh yeah, that's quite good. So if I just push that down, line it up. Yep, I'm happy with that. You can see that lines up quite nicely. And then the other clip as well lines up pretty well. So let's leave these two dry and for the glue to set. For this rear clip that's missing, I've no sort of gauge as to how tall this should be. I'm just assuming that it actually snapped right where the actual clip part should be. That's my sort of best guess. So what I've made again is another little clip. It's just a sort of a little hook shape. This is onto some one millimeter styrene because there's not much uh, gap in this hole here. I don't really want to modify that hole. So I think one millimeter styrene should just about fit. And my plan is to stick that on the back there again I've left quite a long tail so that there's a lot of gluing sort of surface. I will again be using uh, super glue to, to glue this. If this doesn't work this is the one I think uh, might need a, a screw in it just to sort of hold everything in place. But you can see that makes a nice new little clip on the top and it will have a little bit of flex to it just because of the plastic. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to put some little scratch marks just on the back here so that the glue has something to uh, stick into. Because this surface is very shiny, you want to make it a little bit rougher so that the glue has something to hold on to. Uh, all this is hidden inside the toy, so it doesn't really matter uh, if it's uh, sort of a little bit messy. And then I'm going to uh, put some uh, super glue onto this part and we'll sort of put it in place and let it set as well. Uh, it would be ideal if this uh, plastic would work with plastic well, but it just doesn't, it's uh, too flexible. Uh, you sort of soon learn that as you're uh, sort of using different glues, which ones will work. Super glue uh, tends to dry a bit brittle, which is why I want to sort of make a really strong bond over a large surface area, uh, and that should give it the uh, best chance of working. If this doesn't work, then I may have to try some other glues, or as I say, put a screw in place. But uh, let's try this first. So I'm going to line that up, drop that down. That. and we'll let that set. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. It's now a day later and a moment of truth. This uh, clip on the back has actually stuck remarkably well. Because the uh, bit of plastic underneath has got a bit of flex to it, I'm very hopeful that that will work just with glue. You can see I can put quite a lot of force onto that and there's no movement. So I think that is a good fix. Uh, these two clips on here, again, you can see they do look remarkably like the original ones. You can see that's the top clip there. And if we look at the bottom clip, I think that is a pretty reasonable sort of recreation of it. And they feel really firm. Leaving the super glue to set for a day or overnight really does make quite a difference. I know you can get some accelerator sprays that are probably something I should get because it does the same job. But I'm very hopeful that all of these clips will work. So uh, really the only thing to do is to try it. So I'll uh, put this together. So this small clip goes into this little hole here and I think we just have to push it and we'll see what happens. I'm really hopeful that it just goes in. Oh yeah, that's good. That's in and feels quite firm. Yep, I'm happy with that. So now we turn this over. We've got two clips here because we have this rear clip and also the one on the bottom of the engine. So the, let's do the bottom of the engine one first. Let's line everything up so we can clip that one in. This one feels a bit tighter. Yeah, it feels a bit tight. I don't want to. I don't want to sort of force it and break it. That's what I'm worried about. So uh, I'm just going a little bit sort of delicate with this. Let's try it from this angle. Oh no, that's on. That feels good. And we'll do that rear clip here, which goes into the back of the engine. Right, that may be a bit short. I think I have actually made that little rear clip too short. As I said, I wasn't sure where it had broken. And I think, just looking at that, yeah, I've made that too short. So a little bit annoying. I'm going to have to modify that one slightly. But the other two clips are holding. Everything is held quite nicely in place. In fact, you could probably get away with not having that rear clip. 
but I might as well fix that. So I'm going to extend that rear clip and then we'll do this again. But that is very satisfying. It has worked. Okay, so it's second time the charm on this. I uh, took the clip off and I've made a new one, which is now slightly higher. And I think this is a better chance of fitting. As I say, I didn't have an original one to copy, so I was sort of guessing where it had snapped and I guessed wrong. Uh, but sometimes that happens when you're sort of uh, working on a toy. So we can now try and put this back together. We've got all the clips in place. I can line this all up. We'll clip the middle clip in first. This was a little bit tight the first time around. Okay, that clips in and then we can clip this back clip on. Yep, yeah, and that is clipped nicely. You can just about see it in there. So that's my new clip there. And that feels really quite sturdy. I think the bike is back together and can be played with. Brilliant. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. And there we go, that is the bike all back together and working. As you saw, it was a fair amount of work to make these clips, but uh, without that, the uh, bike wasn't very displayable and you couldn't really do much with it just because it kept falling apart. But now with all the clips in place, you can actually see everything is firmly held on, apart from the pilot, obviously I uh, didn't put him on properly. He has fallen off there. But uh, the rest of the bike does look really quite nice and it is certainly a very displayable piece again. As time goes by, hopefully I'll uh, find some sort of replacement parts for those broken pieces and I can swap them out. As you can see, the uh, red parts of this toy have got quite faded over the years. The uh, color has been bleached out of them, so it'd be nice to replace those. And if I find sort of unbroken parts to uh, swap out the engine, then I will swap those out. But in the meantime, as you can see, it is quite a nice displayable piece again. And it's certainly something that will look quite good with the rest of my G.I. Joe collection. So worth the time and worth the effort trying to uh, put that all back together. I do need to say a big thank you to Philippe, who uh, very kindly sent this along with a whole load of other G.I. Joe projects that I hope to get to in the near future. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.